All right, hello there, world history people. Let's learn about a whole bunch of changes in medicine during this time period, and we'll also learn about some changes in economic systems during this time period. So the Industrial Revolution now has all these people moving into cities, living in those crowded tenement apartments, and now there's so many more people and garbage and human waste all kind of pushed together. It's going to cause a lot of new medical problems uh, for humans on planet Earth. So let's check out some of these problems right here. Whoa, oh, come on. Here we go. Yeah, so here's uh, some kids in a slum in India. It's uh, not looking really great. Here's people living in tenement conditions. Also, not not ideal. This is what family of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people in one room. And here's some kids playing with a dead horse. Jeez, man, the past was rough. Here's a kid with some kind of crazy skin disease. Totally not cool. And uh, here are two twin brothers. Uh, one of them got smallpox and the other did not. And smallpox has been the most deadly disease in human history for uh, yeah, all of history. So uh, it's a terrible, terrible disease. And then here's a guy who's swimming in garbage. No thanks. Um, okay, so during this time period, the late 1800s, there was the creation of Western medicine. Uh, we functionally just call it medicine here in the United States, but if you ever travel to an Asian country, uh, they practice different forms of medicine there. So yeah, starting in the 1860s, medical advancements were happening at just an incredible rate. Uh, we were discovering how the human body worked, discovering processes of treating people and making them better. Because for so much of this class period, uh, medicine was kind of seen as taboo by uh, the Christian church. And uh, in fact, so much so that medicine was better in the year 30 BC than it was in 1776. Uh, because during the Dark Ages, almost all scientific medicine was outlawed. And uh, now scientific medicine is coming back. So here we go, medicine living it up all right western medicine let's check it out medicine based on science okay so first the idea of germ theory this is a pretty key idea in western medicine was uh, confirmed by john snow and louis pasteur in 1854 they linked an outbreak of cholera to a specific water pump in broad street london and uh, it's pretty ingenious how john snow figured this out uh, he had the suspicion that water could be contaminated by tiny, tiny little organisms that people couldn't see. Um, but back during that time, people are like, you're an idiot, Jon Snow. Water is always clean. Disease exists in the air. There's just these like bad clouds that transmit disease. And Jon Snow said like, okay, some disease can go through the air, but I think water is a more common way to get disease. And he... Uh, ultimately determined that almost everybody who got cholera in London that year lived on Broad Street. So he said, hey, why don't we just disable the water pump, dig up the water pump, and see if there's something wrong with it. And sure enough, they disabled the pump, and then the cholera stopped. They dug out the pump, and they found out that a sewer line was feeding in sewer water into the drinking water. So they fixed that, and then there was no more cholera, and they proved beyond a doubt that cholera comes from bad water. So that's uh, pretty awesome. Good job, Jon Snow. Okay, so this guy's drinking some gross water. I definitely don't recommend that. Uh, this is what cholera does to your body. It's just a really terrible, terrible disease. No thank you. Uh, here they are taking off the handle of the Broad Street pump. And here's Jon Snow snowing, showing that there's all kinds of little germs coming out of water pumps. Pretty gross. Um, okay, and then uh, there was this British surgeon named Joseph Lester, and he also was a guy who was questioning this thought that all disease existed in the air in these kind of invisible clouds. Um, and that bad idea was called miasma. Miasma were these supposed clouds of disease that roamed around. Um, and jo Joseph Lister, he really thought about it and kind of built off Jon Snow's idea. He's like, look, if, if these little microbe germs can exist in water, maybe they can also exist on surfaces. 
So Joseph Lister said, you know what? I'm going to make sure that everything I do in medicine is super duper clean. I'm going to always wash my hands. I'm going to always wash my instruments. Because back in the past, before Joseph Lister, it was pretty common for a doctor to like cut open somebody with a knife and then just walk over to another person with the same knife and cut them open too. So they, they didn't have this idea of, of hardcore cleanliness. Um, and Joseph Lister... Uh, his hospital started to have a significantly higher survivability rate once he was starting to clean everything. And so that's why cleaning everything has been proven to be the surefire way to not make diseases or infections worse. So good job, Joseph Lister. You made it happen. All right, so there he is washing his hands, and here's people working in that early medicine. Okay, and now we get to vaccinations. This is a very appropriate concept to talk about in the year 2021. Uh, a vaccination is when the human body is exposed to a weaker version of a major disease. Because the way you can think about it is your human immune system, once it gets a disease, the disease will make you sick and it'll really suck. But assuming you survive the disease, your immune system will learn from that experience and it will become sort of better equipped to fight that disease in the future. And once the human body has such an exposure to certain diseases, the body can be eventually become immune to certain diseases. So uh, this uh, British guy named Edward Jenner, he found out that there was this milkmaid who was immune to smallpox, smallpox being the most deadly disease in the world. And he's like, how did you get that immunity? So the milkmaid said, my cow has a different disease. My cow has a disease called cowpox. And what I do is I scrape off some of those cowpox on the cow. I, you know, put it, I drink the cowpox, which I'm sure is disgusting and terrible. And yes, she got sick for a couple of days, but cowpox is such a weaker version of smallpox that will never ever kill humans. So she gets sick with cowpox, but then her immune system learns how to fight a disease like cowpox. And cowpox and smallpox are like very, very similar diseases. So Jenner decides that he's going to kind of take this cowpox and turn it into a vaccine, an injectable serum. And he injected cowpox into a, a really brave volunteer a child in London. And then they exposed that kid uh, well, so the kid got cowpox, he got sick for like a week, but then he recovered fully fine. Then they exposed that kid to smallpox. They directly did that. They injected smallpox in him and were like, this would kill a normal person. And the kid didn't have any problems at all. So uh, vaccinations is just one of the greatest achievements in medical history. And over time, this smallpox vaccine will spread around the entire world. And by the time we got to the 1960s, every single person on planet earth was either vaccinated to smallpox and smallpox was just eliminated it's not a disease that kills anybody anymore today so it's been a a huge success uh in our world so vaccinating everybody stops diseases it's, it's pretty awesome so let's check it out all right so this is a kid with uh smallpox terrible terrible disease killed a lot of people Here's a cow, and the cow's udders could have cowpox. Here's Edward Jenner vaccinating a kid. And that's the whole purpose of medicine, right? It's to fight death. And medicine has successfully cured the world of the disease that killed more human beings than anything else. So thank you, medicine. Thank you, vaccines. Um, okay, and yeah, so smallpox has been human humanity's greatest enemy killed millions and millions of people every year, killed more people than all wars combined. And yeah, the last recorded case was 1977. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is, this is the disease that wiped out the Native Americans and it's no longer a threat to planet Earth. So here's just uh, some pictures of people who got this disease It especially affected children. It was really terrible. So smallpox, no longer. Thanks, Edward Jenner, you did it. Uh, okay, now let's talk about some other medical advancements. So the X-ray, which was discovered by Wilhelm Con Conrad Rodigan, 
on uh, November 1895, he discovered that if you put a cathode ray tube in front of a camera and then you took a picture, you could see things inside people's bodies. Um, and you could notice any kind of unnatural body elements. So yeah, you got to just have x-ray vision, there you go. Um, and uh, it's really helpful for doctors, especially knowing where some kind of problem is inside of a person under their skin. Let's uh, check out some pictures here. So here's a lady getting x-rayed on her chest. Uh, this dude has some kind of problem. Uh, it's something's wrong with his right lung, or actually left lung for uh, his body. Uh, this person has a brain tumor and you can see it in the x-ray. And then this dude's just wearing a ring. There's nothing wrong with his finger. He's just wearing a ring. Okay, this dude somehow got a nail up his mouth or his nose. Oh my gosh, that's scary. Uh, this dude fractured his, uh, what is this called? Your clavicle bone or shoulder bone, something like that. And uh, this person has a tiny, uh, what was that called? A hairline fracture in their middle, I think this is their toes, so their middle toe. And you can see on one x-ray where the fracture is, and the other x-ray there's a lot of inflammation, it's really puffy uh, in that part of their, their foot. And uh, they x-rayed a dog, and you can see the dog ate the car keys. Oh dog, what have you done? <laughs> this person really messed up their spine. Wow, that's, uh, they're probably paralyzed. That's pretty rough. Um, okay. And so they came up with some uh, new medicines during this time period, too. And uh, they discovered that there were these medicines collectively known as anesthesia, which numbs all sensations of pain in a patient. Um, one of these early anesthetics was cocaine, uh, developed by a German dude named Karl Kohler. It was an extremely effective numbing agent. Like, people took cocaine and they felt no pain at all. But... They also found out it was really addictive. And over time, people started to abuse this drug and use it all the time. And people were never feeling pain in, in any physical regard in society. And people were doing a lot of stupid stuff and having to take this drug all the, all the time. Um, and this is especially a huge problem in, well, when it first came out, true, but then also in the 1980s. So cocaine has done more bad than good in our world but it was originally used by doctors, so the more you know. All right, so yeah, here's a uh, old-timey cocaine tablet uh, medicine thing. Um, here's a cocaine for hay fever and throat troubles. Oh, my goodness. And here's Carl Kohler. He's figuring out how cocaine works, cocaine messing up our country. And then another interesting fact is the popular drink Coca-Cola used to have actual cocaine in the recipe i know it's crazy children so here's a uh, uh some of the original advertisements for coca-cola call it the intellectual beverage a beverage that contains a nerve stimulant of the coca plant um and what does it say here it's a valuable brain tonic a cure-all for nervous affliction sick headache hysteria melancholy so they said coca-cola was like a medicine which i think is just wild too and uh, yeah, Coca-Cola is the only U.S. corporation that has the right to legally import coca leaves into the United States. Coca-Cola has still never given away its secret recipe, and it's uh, pretty clear that it's you know probably something involving cocaine. So yeah, Coca-Cola. Here's a bunch of information about it, and uh, definitely uh, be 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 cautious about drinking Coca-Cola. That's all I'll say. So. Yeah, it's a connection to the cocaine business, and it's uh, it's kind of kind of crazy stuff. Okay, and then here's just some other interesting medicines during this time period. So you know, you you might think like, wow, Mr. Brown, wouldn't it be exciting to go back 150 years ago and have all these medicines? Honestly, I don't think so, because as you can see here, some of these medicines didn't work out too well. Uh, the first one is the beard generator. They found this special cream that men could put on their faces, I guess women too, and uh, in just a few days you'd grow a thick, full beard. But they didn't really test this uh, medication really well, and yes, you would grow a beard, but then 
a couple weeks, a couple months later, then your skin would start to fade out and you would never be able to grow any hair again. So it kind of just shoots all the hair out once and then you're screwed for the rest of your life. Um, here are these uh, other tablets saying that women should put radiation on their skin to give their skin kind of a glowing uh, aspect. Uh, so yeah, they have radioactive pads. You wear them on your back or your stomach at night. And uh, people say that it, it healed problems, but what they found out is everybody who used these things ultimately got some kind of cancer later in their lives. So totally not cool. Um, what else we got here? Aspirin or heroin for your cough. Um, heroin for your cough. That's a terrible idea. It's just like cocaine. It's super duper addictive and it will ultimately do more harm than good. Uh, this one I think is really wild. Uh, hey there, ladies. Do you like to eat, eat, and want to always stay thin? No diet, no bath, no exercise? Your fat will be banished. How? With a tapeworm. You just eat this worm whole, it'll live inside of you, and it will eat your food as you eat it. Uh, the only problem is, eventually that worm's gonna grow so big, it'll start to eat all your food, and it could result in some pretty serious side effects. So, sanitize tapeworms. Terrible, terrible idea. Don't want to have a worm living inside you. You can see it move in your stomach. Oh, it would be, it'd be the worst. All right, and then here's asthma cigarettes for your health. Oh my gosh, that's a terrible idea. Um, so yeah, crazy, crazy medicines of the past. Um, okay, and then I think I'll uh, do this stuff in the very next video. All right, peace out.